we're live. All right. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Starting a Business in Illinois live stream. My name is Eric B. Horn, and I am one of the guest business advisors at the Illinois Small Business Development Center at the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce. Usually that's a mouthful, so I'm glad that I was able to say that without stumbling over my words. However, if you are looking at this live stream and you want to start a business in Illinois, you are in the right place. The overall concept of this live stream is to give you a better understanding of if you are thinking about starting a business in Illinois, to let you know how simple the overall process is. I'm not saying that it's easy to start a business and run a business because there are your challenges and your pros and cons. However, what I'm going to do today is give you six easy steps that you can take to go through the process of you thinking about starting a business to actually having your overall paperwork and moving in the right direction. So what I'm going to do is take 20 minutes out and give you a, a gist of that. Um, I also have a full-fledged presentation throughout this process. And if you guys like what you hear and you want to go a deeper dive, please put that in the overall comments so we can start that for the month of December. Um, before I get started, I always like to give a breakdown of what the Small Business Development Center is, because a lot of times people see the letters and they really don't have an understanding or they've heard about us, but they really don't know what's what. So, and I like to read this verbatim, so everybody has a clear understanding of what not only the Illinois Small Business Development Center does, but the network of centers throughout the United States. But the specifically, the Illinois Small Business Development Center is a network of centers in the country partially funded by the SBA, which is the U.S. Small Business Administration, to provide technical assistance and the most important thing, no cost advising to small business owners. So to put it in layman terms, we are an organization that helps people start their overall business. Um, we were just talking before the, the live stream, we provide you solid information to help you start your business, to help you be successful. And it doesn't come out of your pocket. So it's a win-win situation. So if you are thinking about starting a business or if you are in the process of you are running your business, you're looking for additional advice or other resources, we are the go-to organization. But also after this quick presentation, we also have an interview with one of our overall clients, which I'm very excited about. However, let's get down to the nitty gritty. When it comes to starting a business in Illinois, once again, I have six steps, but the first step is to select a validated business. And what do I mean by that? When it comes to starting a business, you may have tons of ideas. You have a lot of people that have great ideas, but it's not conceptualized to the point where you can make money off of it. Because one of the main reasons why you want to start a business is to make a profit. I'm not saying that's the only reason why you want to. You may want to have a business to fuel a passion or you want to have a business to um, incorporate your overall family. But when it comes to numbers, and we all know that numbers don't lie, you start a business because you want to make an overall profit. So one of the first steps, even before you get into the process of starting your business, is to validate the type of business that you have. And based off of my overall experience as an advisor, we go about it two ways. I'm not saying these are the only two ways, but these are the two ways that usually work for me with my business or when I first started my business and also works with the clients that, that I serve. But the first one is to do extensive research. Um, you want to make sure that your business does exist and someone else has done the business before. Not saying you will be a copycat, but you want to make sure that your business has been proven and whoever started a similar business before, they've proven that they've made some sort of profit from it because you don't want to spend the time, effort and energy and resources to start a business and you really don't know if the business is gonna be successful. Of course, you gotta put your effort into it, but success is knowing that what you're about to get into 
it's somewhat profitable. And you can do research through Google. There's also other um, books and other things that you can read to actually validate the business that you're going to start is an overall business because you want to know what you're getting into. And another reason, another way people validate their overall business is to start a side hustle. Now, I know the concept of a side hustle is hot right now where people they may have a nine to five or they may be doing something else. And on the side, they have a little hustle to generate some additional income. That is another great way to validate your business because one of the key things that my mentor told me is <clears throat> people validate your business based off of them paying for your product or your overall service. And that's one of the key things that you want to keep in mind when you want to validate is someone willing to give <clears throat> you money based off of the product or the service that you provide. If so, then you somewhat validated your business, but it at least gives you the confidence and the understanding that what you're about to get into with the proper hustle, proper mindset and proper resources, you can be successful in it. So the first thing you wanna do is validate your overall business. The second step in starting a business in Illinois is selecting the right business structure. So once again, you're moving from just making money on the side or doing your research to have a, an official business structure. Now, at a high level, you have four types of business structures. You have a sole proprietorship, which is solely you are the person that's running the business. Then you also have a partnership where you and another individual or a group of individuals come together under one business name to run an overall business. You also have a corporation, which is a little bit more complex. Corporations are more from your corporate conglomerates. But when you're starting a business, you're not going to start out as an overall corporation. But I still, for learning purposes, I wanted to let you know that that was another concept. And the last structure is an LLC, which is a limited liability corporation. One of the things, now starting out, you would use you want to use your discretion and use your own research to figure out what business structure is best for you. Because with each, each business structure, you're going to have your pros and your overall cons. So even though I've laid out the four type of business structures, I would highly recommend based off of your situation, um, you do your overall due diligence. It can be even as simple as you going on Google and doing a little bit more research or go to YouTube and figure out which one will work best for you. Now, usually people who have limited to, to no funds, they usually start off at a sole proprietorship, but I would highly recommend if you do start that way, that's understandable based off of your financial situation. But one of the things that I talked about before, you are in business to make a profit. So as you continue to make money, and hopefully <clears throat> you will invest some of that money back into the business, you can move from a sole proprietorship to possibly a partnership or maybe even a limited liability corporation. Once again, based off of your situation and how you progress, you wanna make sure that you have the right business structure. But regardless if it's a sole proprietorship, an LLC, a partnership, you want to have some sort of business structure because if you don't have some type of business structure, you do not have a business. The third. The third step in starting your business in Illinois would be to actually register your business, right? You have to go through the proper paper, that the proper paperwork, that's a tongue twister within itself. You have to go through the proper paperwork and file with the state of Illinois to say, hello, state of Illinois, this is my business and I want to register that to make it official so I can operate within the state of Illinois. Um, I, I cannot off the top of my head remember what the actual link is, but to find out where you would need to go, just go to our best friend Google and type in register your business at the state of Illinois. And you type that in into Google and it will drive you to the actual state of Illinois website. Then you would have to fill out the online paperwork. Um, the online paperwork, there is a fee. I just want you to be very transparent with that. But once again, 
you want to invest in your business and you don't want to really think that you're not going to get anything out of your business if you don't invest in it. However, you would want to fill out the necessary paperwork. Now you can do this paperwork online, especially in the state that we're in when it comes to this overall pandemic. I would highly recommend that you download the, you can add the links to Facebook. Okay, that, that would be great because I want to make sure that you guys do have the exact link so you can just click on it and go to the, the state of Illinois where you can actually register your business. What I would highly recommend anyone to do is once you see the form, download it and go over the form even before you fill out the information. I want to make sure that you guys have a clear understanding of what you have to fill out and more importantly, what they are requiring you, the type of information that they are requiring you to submit. Transparency is something that I highly recommend. So you don't necessarily just have to go to the website, click on it and start filling out the information. A lot of business owners who are just starting out make that mistake without taking the necessary time out to look at the form, look at the information. And, and as a side note, if there's any questions that you guys may have when it comes to actually filling out that paperwork, feel free to reach out to us and we could probably connect you with either myself or another of the uh, business advisors and we can help you walk you through that process once again because we I want to let you know what you're fully walking into and what information that you are required to submit because I want you to make sure that you submit this information once as opposed to making a vital mistake in your paperwork and you going back and forth and drawing out the overall process. You know, we want to make sure that it doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to make sure that you fill out the information to the best of your ability, right? So once you've registered your business with the state of Illinois, the next thing that you will want to do is fill out something called an EIN number, which is an employer identification number. And an employer identification number is, it's also called a tax ID number. But long story short, when you are in business, you got to pay taxes. Now, I know hopefully you guys who are looking at this, when I say you got to pay taxes, you're not running or turning your computer off. But if you are generating revenue, you're going to have to pay taxes. And your EIN number is stating that your business um, is saying that the business that I just registered or the business that I'm operating in, here's the number that I need to actually pay taxes when it comes to April 15th, if I'm not mistaken. I think it is April 15th. But if you're generating funds, you got to pay taxes at the end of the day, unless Uncle Sam is going to come knock on your door. And I wouldn't want that to happen to anyone. But the EIN number is not only for tax purposes, but also if you are doing business, if you're being contracted out to do a business, you're going to also need that EIN number because the EIN number is like, the EIN number is equivalent to a human being's social security number. That's how important that EIN number is. So if you have a business, you've gone through the proper paperwork to fill out for the state of Illinois, the next step will be to get an EIN number. Now, the EIN number you would want to go to the irs.gov. Um, or if you didn't want to drill down, once you go to the irs.gov website, you can just type in, how do I get an EIN number with our friend Google? And it will direct you to that link. So once you go to the website, since it's dealing with the government and things of that nature, it can be a lot of confusing and it can be overwhelming. So there are two ways that you can actually obtain a, a EIN number. The first one, which most people do is you go online and then you fill out an online form. And I think you would get your EIN number, if, if not immediately, at least within the next 12 to 24 hours after you fill out the, um, the online form, which is very fast. However, you have some people that may not feel comfortable filling out their information online. You can also call um, I know Adrian will have that information um, in the, the, the stream, but you can also call them and then they will actually walk you through that process. However, 
whatever avenue you feel the most comfortable with, get your EIN number. Do not, as, a, as you are moving towards your side hustle or just an idea into an actual business, it's even more official that you get your EIN number. I know a lot of people don't identify yourself, but I know there's some people out there that don't like paying taxes. I mean, it is what it is. Uncle Sam is going to get their fair share of stuff. However, another important reason why you want to get your EIN number, which rolls into step five. Now, step five is an option, but I highly recommend people to go ahead and do it. So after you've gotten your EIN number, I tell people to get a business bank account. And actually, I won't name the actual client, but getting a business bank account is very critical because you want to make sure that the income that you are generating in your business, because you're going to generate a profit, you want to make sure that all the money that you, that's coming in and you are spending is in a separate account because it's a lot easier to track when it comes to tax time. Because it's an administrative nightmare if you are doing business and all the money that is being deposited and withdrawn from your business comes from your personal account. So just to avoid all of that, while you're in the process of setting up your business, set up a business bank account. And one of the best ways to go about it is, hopefully everyone on here has a, a business, uh, excuse me, has a, a personal bank account. You can easily, based off of the relationship that you have with your personal banker or your personal bank, just go through the process of setting up a business bank account. I'm telling you, in the long run, that's a investment also, but it's an investment that you'll be able to track everything that's coming in and coming out. Because when it comes to, I know a lot of CPAs that, that dread doing the books and doing their uh, clients because they know that it's a lot of paperwork and it's a lot of, okay, was this from your personal or was this a business expense? To avoid all of that, just set up a business bank account. It will make your life easier. So I see that our guest Jacqueline is here, but just before, before we move over to Jacqueline, I want to go over these five steps to start a business in Illinois again. First and foremost, validate your overall business. You wanna make sure that the business that you are about to start it can possibly generate an overall profit. Step two, select the right business structure, whether it's a sole proprietorship or LLC or uh, even a partnership. Make sure that you have the right business structure. You can always change a business structure as your business progresses, but you want to have a clear understanding of the type of business structure that you have. Step number three is register your business with the state of Illinois. Once again, if you guys will want a more in-depth process on how to do that, please let us know and we can set up a webinar on how to go through that process. Step four, get your EIN. The government wants their money also, so make sure that you have your business is associated with the proper tax ID because you want to make sure that you cross your T's and dot your I's because you don't want to be in a situation where you are generating a lot of profit and you're not reporting that to, to Uncle Sam because they'll find a way. I mean, I won't go any further with that, but they'll do their due diligence and find their way because they want their money also. And last but not least, it's optional, but I would highly recommend for you to start a business bank account. Once again, this is just a quick overview on how to start this. We also have a full-fledged webinar that does a, a deeper dive into that overall process. But if you are thinking about starting a business in Illinois. If you have a talent, if you have a passion, whatever it is that's pushing you to start this business, do not hesitate. Small business is going to be, and it is one of the driving forces, not only when it comes to providing for yourself, but most importantly, also providing opportunity for other individuals. That's been, and speaking from as an entrepreneur, having a, a business um, outside of getting married and having my child, I want to make sure that I say they're more important than my business because I don't want no problems. Having your, your own business gives you a, um, a sense of pride and it can also give you a very good understanding of how you can be a driving force in the overall economy. But enough about me. So we got that piece out the way. 
So now we're going to do something a little different. Um, we're inviting one of our wonderful clients, Jacqueline El Elliott, who is the CEO of Gorgeous Whips. She's gonna come in here and have a great conversation on her, just so you guys also know that he here's one of the clients that we serve who's doing very well. And we're gonna get more in depth with her entrepreneurial life. So Jacqueline, are you on? Yeah, hi, how are you? Hey, hey, how are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. That's good. So first and foremost, thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your schedule to talk more about you, your business, and things of that nature. So the first question that I would like to ask Jacqueline, so tell us about your business and how did you get started with Gorgeous Whips? Okay, well, thank you guys for having me. It's such an honor to be a part of this uh, program, this group. I, I'm, I'm just so elated with uh, the people that I've met, Adrian, yourself, uh, Ricky. People have just really been great sources, resources in my journey uh, thus far. So again, my name is Jacqueline Elliott, and I am the CEO, founder, and formulator of Gorgeous Whips Skin Beauty Body Products. So how I got started in this thing uh, initially, um, I, I've been practicing skincare for now probably about 20 years and got a little burnout after owning, you know, a few uh, beauty and skincare spa salons and kind of decided, you know, okay, what would I do? And I always knew it, I needed to do something that was in beauty, but what? I didn't want to do another facial, another eyebrow wax, another wax, another nothing in that respect. So decided I, I went and got a job in a credit card company, right? So I've been doing that skincare thing for about 15 years or so at that time and knew I knew nothing about a credit card, how to make a credit card. And I think the reason they hired me was because uh, I knew color, I knew aesthetics, I knew how to make these credit cards really pretty and everything. You know how we get our credit cards, they look all gorgeous, right? And so I, six months later, I said, okay, I'm done, I quit, all right? So I just kind of laid back and chilled and kind of figured out what it was. And one day I decided I was gonna make a body butter. I wasn't even making it for a business. I was making it for me personally. And so when I started making this butter and after I completed making the actual butter, after I did some, uh, of course, research and things like that, trying to figure out how am I going to do this? You know, I made this butter and I go, mm, that is gorgeous. So <laughs> here's the name gorgeous with. So everything, every butter that I've made, um, 27 butters later, kind of like trickle down and transform into a business. So that's pretty much how I got started in the uh, beauty business after the butters. You know, I know a lot of us as women, especially, we like to put, um, you know, makeup on as band-aids, especially if we have an impure skin, right? And so that's when I went on and told myself, it's okay, well, you know what? Make body products, but also go into a skincare line. line. Now Gorgeous Whips has a full-blown skincare line all the way from cleansers, moisturizers, treatment creams, uh, you name it, we pretty much have it. Yeah, I, I love it. And the, the beauty of it is how it started because you said you started it for, for you, right? Yes. So you make sure that, and, and a lot of times people have the misconception that they need some immaculate story on why they want to start their overall business. But it can be as simple as, starting it out for you, but then also understanding that you as an individual, you can help serve other individuals based off of what you're doing. So yes. I definitely love that overall concept. So let me shift gears for a quick second, because when it comes to the age of social media, they've a lot of people position entrepreneurship as just this, one, it's easy, two, it's all about your successes and it's all about just happy happy joy joy but entrepreneurship is like a roller coaster where you're going to have your ups yes. and your overall downs whether it's lessons learned and more importantly your overall successes but based off of your overall experience what has been your most rewarding experience and your most challenging Wow, it's a lot of question, Aaron. So, uh, so my my most rewarding experience is actually, you know, having and and just kind of knowing, getting to that point where you're you're knowing what your gift is, you're knowing what 
you should be doing and how you want to serve and what you're making and how this is going to help to manifest, you know, to help other people. Because, you know, you can do something and not know why you're doing it, right? right? right. Or, you know, or should I be doing this? Because we all have gifts, we all have talents and skills. But when I discovered what my talent was, and that was working and creating with my hands, that was very, very, very rewarding to me to know that. And once I discovered that talent and that skill about me, I mean, it was like boots hitting the ground and now it's time to go because I know what I can do with this skill and this talent. Now, the most challenging, of course, I can make these products with my eyes closed, but that most challenging is the marketing, is letting people know who you are, why you are, what your product is, and how it's going to help them to captivate that audience to, to truly, truly, just like, I, like I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. This is how I want to my message to inflect every post that I put out there. You know, I don't want to be, I want to be authentic in everything that I say, in all the photos that I'm showing, and all the text that I'm putting out there. So that becomes a real challenge because like you said, a lot of people think, okay, well, it's easy, post a picture or just say some stuff. No, because anybody can say some stuff. But if I was to present a product physically to a person, that product, my voice, as I'm speaking to you now, is going to be just that. It's like, oh, wow, she talks as though this product was speaking. Right. If that makes any sense? Yeah. Right? So that, that's what's really, really challenging is just to make sure that, you know, you're always authentic in your presentation, whatever that product may, may be. Okay. And actually you, you, you strike me as a, a humble genius where you, <laughs> you're, with your, with you being gifted and creating these products and things of that nature. Cause one of the things that you, you stood out, I'm a man, but one of the things that you said was makeup don't use makeup as a band-aid in a sense and yes. so it's a lot more that you are positioning your products not just for someone to look good on the outside but also Correct. to feel good on the inside which yes. is one of those concepts where you, people need to know more about your business and which your mission in a sense yes because right. it, it's not just about your overall products but usually the the the, the businesses like you who have a greater cause, they somewhat struggle with marketing because if you're not trying to be flamboyant, you're not trying to say, whoa, it's me. Look, just look at my product for the sake of me. But in actuality, it's one of those things where with your business and who you are, your message needs to be pushed out there to the point where the masses know about it. Because the more people know about it, it's not of course, like I talked about before, it's about making a profit, but the more people know about your products and purchase the product, it's bigger than just making money at the end of the day. You want to make a profit. Don't get me oh, wrong. Of course. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. You want to make a profit, but you it's, it's a lot, lot bigger than just how much money you're, you're making in a sense. And that's the reason why it's like you, you, you need to be on billboards and be at the level of L'Oreal and things of that nature because it's yes. a lot bigger than um, what it's a lot bigger than what most people would just think about the money is doing, which is totally understandable. So now I'm sure that you have some great things planned for the holiday because we are in the midst of shopping season and with me being married, I want to make sure that I get the right gifts <laughs> for my wife, right? So That's right. based off of that, what do you have planned for your customers for the holiday season? And more importantly, what can people look for from Gorgeous Whips during the holiday season? So uh, great. Yeah. So what what we're planning right now, we're doing the theme of, uh, around um, more, more, and this is always our theme around health and wellness, but we're targeting and focusing on um people, and this is unisex, okay? So mm -hmm. I don't want people to look at it as just for women, where people are focusing more on their well-being, right? Mm -hmm. And that's through 
you know, uh, it's a nerve that we talk about in the studies called your olfactory nerve. It's your, your, your sense of smelling, right? Mm -hmm. So we want people to be able to um, capture our, um, it's called our couture uh, body collection, which includes a body butter, a body wash, as well as a body scrub. So all of those things working in unison because one does not work well without the other if you're looking to have great, soft, nourished skin, right? Mm -hmm. So first we're going to cleanse that body. Then we're going to scrub or do a body buffer with our uh, one of our buffers. And then we go in and we put, and we lock all that in with our body butters. So that is one of the um, things that Gorgeous is gonna be doing for the holiday season. We're gonna be doing moisturizers for the skin as well. Everything that per, is pertaining to moisture because you know, living here in the Midwest or even so if you're living somewhere where it's really, really dry in mm -hmm. Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. Vegas, you still need moisture in that skin because once you lose moisture, there's only one thing that happens and it's aging. Aging mm -hmm. happens so we don't always want to focus on that skin. So we want to focus on the entire body. And that's where Gorgeous Wicks is going to be coming in and just really, really uh, just kind of talking about that holiday season where we're going to be having some amazing promotion. So now in the future here, we're also going to be just uh, doing a lot of videos, kind of like talking about the product, showing you exactly, you know, what it is that you need to be using, doing some Q and A's, you know, uh, you can go on our, on our uh, website and there's a test you can take for your skincare. So that you won't have to be uh, trying to figure out, okay, what is it that I need to do? Because more than often, if your face is dry, your whole body probably is dry. And of course, living here in the Midwest, you know, we're going to be a little drier, but Gorgeous Whips can help to alleviate some of those dry issues that you're dealing with. And of course, this is just not a winter thing. This is something that we're going to recommend that you do just throughout your lifetime because Gorgeous Whips is a lifestyle skin and body brand. I like that. I like that tagline at the end. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, you know what? I just came up with that. That was a good one. <laughs> hey, yeah, hey, babe. you can continue to use that. That's the tag. That's the winner at the end That's of the, the tagline. You got it. So we talked about how you guys started in your business. We talked about some of the challenges and the experiences. We also talked about some of the great things that you have planned for the holidays. So if there's someone on this live stream right now who, who has their, their wallet out and they are ready to start buying, how can they find you? How can they purchase your products? How can we give you some money? Oh, of course. Yes. So you can go to our website, which is, I'm going to spell it for you. Okay. It's G-O-R-J-U-S-W-H-I-P as in Paul, S.com. It's gorgeouswhips.com. You can grab us there. You can go to our IG page, Instagram, at Gorgeous Whips. You can connect with us on Facebook, okay? You, if you're in the Bolingbrook area, we're in the Painted Tree, a boutique I just set up. You can go there and get uh, body products. You can as well, you can go downtown to uh, downtown Flossmoor um, at the Gypsy Shop. You can go in there and get the products. If you're in Atlanta, Georgia, you can go into Sister Shop right. in, the, <laughs> in the Jersey Mill Mall. Our products is there. You know, but we also have a boutique as well, um, the Painted Tree in Roswell, Georgia. So. That is our goal that we are looking to go global. We are looking to have a presence in all 50 states. And I believe that that is going to happen. We are just moving. We are just pushing. But the only way that we have been really able to do a lot of that is to have some amazing, amazing uh, people behind us, air, such as yourself, such as Adrian, such as Ricky, such as the small business. I mean, you know, when you have to wear so many hats, trust me, sometimes you don't have to pay for all the hats. There are people out there that will definitely help you to get to where you need to be. And I just thank those people. And of course, I thank my truly, truly, truly dear, dear husband, 
for helping with me with so many things, all the way from formulations to making sure that product is made properly, that everything we're we're doing and yes, that Illinois, you know, uh, business development center, you guys have been just amazing. Well, we we thank you, and I think the biggest thank you that we can receive is you continue to be successful. You know, sky is the limit, and you are truly a, an example of a successful business owner. And that's the, the overall beauty of entrepreneurship, because at the end of the day, through the ups and downs, through just the lessons learned and the pain that you endure, knowing that you are continuously moving in the right direction and being more successful, that's, that's the biggest thank you. That's what we are here for. So Jacqueline, thank you again for your time, effort, and energy. Did you have any any last words for us? Not to put you on the spot, but you're- No, you're no, no. You, you know, the last words, you know, anyone on this live, I just want to say that, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, yeah, you know, it, it, it can be tough. It can be tough. And everybody is not cut out to, uh, to do that. Um, you know, the leadership is really, really something that has to play a huge role to be an entrepreneur. But one thing, the last thing I will say is that when you don't know what to do, sometimes you just have to be still. Be still and do nothing. That's all the way, even with the whole social media thing. Just don't put it out there just to put it out there, just to say that, oh, I did this today. But just be still. And the answers will come to you. Be still. There you go. And that speaks volumes. You know, hopefully yes. people will receive that, that, that message because there's a lot more to that. You you, be, you already know it is, right? Yeah, That's right. Go. Just, just be go. still. Cool. And move out of your own way. Yep. Exactly. So thank you again for your, your time and everything. And welcome, guys, if you're still on, thank you for taking the time, effort, and energy to be a part of this live stream. If you had any questions, comments, concerns based off of anything that we talked about, or you wanted to register with the SBDC so you can talk to a business advisor to help you with your business, I know Adrian will put that link in the chat below. But thank you again, guys. You guys have a good one. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. Have a great one. Bye bye. Go so while we're sitting here, we might be able to do another. That was good. Yeah.